This is the Audio Fit Test Podcast, where we change the game for beginners to health and fitness. No fads, no gimmicks, just solid advice that will get you results. In this episode, we look at what to do if you have an injury, become ill, slip up, or just lose sight of your fitness goal. Here's Jim of jimshealthandmuscle.com, who once sang Piano Man by Billy Joel at a karaoke party. Hi, this is Jim from jimshealthandmuscle.com and audiofittest.com. And today I want to talk about an important part of anyone's fitness journey. In today's episode, I'm going to address an issue that everybody will have at some point uh, in some form. And I always go on about creating good habits as these habits will eventually become part of your daily routine and play their part in creating the best possible you when it comes to health, fitness, mindset and so on. But what happens if your life suddenly gets in the way and forces you to change things? Now this happens to everybody and even as someone who's used fitness and training for my whole life, I can say that unless you're aware of the effect that knockbacks, uh, changes in circumstance, illness, a change of workplace, etc, etc, um, this type of thing can spell the end of your fitness journey or at best cause a loop you have to keep stop starting losing your progression and starting again from right back at the beginning as i mentioned this happens to everybody and as usual if you've listened to any of my stuff before you'll know that this is how i like to get a message across i'll give an example of one of my experiences with this in the last podcast episode i talked about how the gym i trained at for the past 10 years closed and I was forced to find a new place to train. Now I want to stick with this as it fits in very nicely for this episode too. So the gym that I'd been training at, the gym that I had created a 10 year habit of going to closed and these good established and unbreakable habits of visiting the gym and training that I had nurtured had been taken away from me. So great yeah nice one your gym closed just find another gym. Jesus. Problem solved. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I feel that might be a, a response from some people. And on the face of it, that's exactly what I did. And that's exactly what you need to do. But it's not that simple as there's a lot more to it than than that. And knowing this will make it easier. So let me break it down. So the example that I've used, um, my gym closed. Yeah. So to get to my gym... I, I cycled there rather than walked or used the car. So this was about a 14 mile round trip. And when I decided to start up on my own, my online fitness business back in uh, 2013, I needed to cut back on anything that cost me money. And one of these items was a car. Obviously, if you guys have got a car, you'll know how expensive they are to run. So I sold my car and got a bike now, if I ever needed a car, I could use uh, Mrs. Jim's Health and Muscles car because she's got one for work as well. So I guess this was me doing my part for the environment as well. So, you know, that ticks a box. But if I, if I needed a car, there was one there, but it was, um, it was unreliable. I couldn't, I couldn't just rely on it. So obviously I had to get a bike. Anyway, I eventually got used to not needing a car and sure, it was a bit tough in the beginning as, as this in itself was a big change. And there are many people in this day and age that, that could, could not do without a car. So no car, cycling everywhere, and I got used to it. So when the gym closed after all this time, um, a great opportunity popped up to join, for me, to join a brand new gym uh, at a ridiculously cheap monthly membership cost. Um but it was it was out of reach to bike to, but it was also open 24 hours. So there's a lot of pluses for this, and I obviously needed to find a new place to train anyway. But because it was out of reach, this means that I'd have to find a way to get there or simply write off this particular gym and look for another one. Now, I did end up joining this gym and found a way to work it so that I could get at least four training sessions in per week by using Mrs. Jim's Health and Muscles car when she didn't need it. So getting back to the whole disruption in routine causing problems with, with your training and fitness goals, 
this transition between my gym closing and me getting into a new routine in a new gym was not as straightforward as it sounds. And it actually took me around two full months, or probably a little bit more actually, to get back into a comfortable routine as I had before. And as we all know, without a routine and consistency in the gym, you're never going to get results. You're never going to progress with your fitness, whether it's weight loss, um, building muscle or whatever. Now, here are the reasons why it was so tough and it took so long for me to get used to it. So for starters, I had to find another way to get to the gym. I could have got myself another car, but this would have added um, to the disruption by putting extra financial pressure that I wasn't used to on top of everything else. So the other option was to use Mrs. Jim's Health and Muscles car when she didn't need it and throw in a bit of fuel here and there. And as the new gym is open 24 hours, there's a lot more flexibility for me to do this. So also, the second point, I now had to train at different times of day. And this meant that eating times and diet had to change slightly too. Also, as I was previously cycling to the gym, I was not doing any cardio exercise now unless it was done in the gym. This meant that the actual training in the gym had to be redesigned slightly too. One thing I did notice here too was that I was holding more body fat. So more tweaks to diet and training had to be made to balance this out. Also, the equipment in the new gym is different. There are a lot of new bits and pieces, but there are also um, no substitutions for some of the best exercises that I was used to using at my old gym. And luckily for me, I know how to adapt machines bars and dumbbells to be able to emulate what I've missed but I imagine for a lot of people without the knowledge of kinesiology this would be very inconvenient and may cause gaps in their training so it took time for me to tweak my training sessions here as well. Also mentally this was a big change too as all the above points have a bearing on mindset a new place to train new people new timing new ways to train new morning routine, new meal prep, all of these things require mental energy and organisation on top of that. And I do have other commitments other than writing fitness books and talking into a microphone. Um, I've got another job too, so this had to be worked into the whole routine as well. Now, the one thing I can't relate to that I know is a big issue for a lot of people is having children. But I can imagine um, this is another massive commitment to many. So um, this will have a bearing on any disruption to routine as well. I'm also um, reluctant to give my take on this as it's something that I don't have any personal experience with. But I will say that the creation of any routine should be worked into lifestyle. And I don't see why looking after children is that different. I mean that's part of a lifestyle and if the motivation for fitness or or any other goal for that matter um, is there there'll always be a way now I can say that from experience anyway before I get off track the points just mentioned all bring their own challenges to the table on the face of it the change of circumstance was that I had to change gyms to work out in and This is probably how most people will see it, but hopefully you can see that there is a lot more to it than that. And I hope that it highlights some potential problems that you could be facing if you have disruption to routine. So this was a real life example of a disruption to routine that happened to me recently, but it's not the only one that's ever happened. Like everyone else, I get sick, I go on holiday, have family emergencies, uh, I've moved house, Um, I (laughs) eat my weight in chocolate over Christmas without going to the gym, all that kind of thing. All of these things can really make you slip up, uh, lose motivation to train, lose sight of your fitness goals and lose, lose motivation to carry on. But if you can't find a way to get past these issues, you will only ever get to a certain fitness level before something happens to get in your way again. Now, if you want to get real results, you need 
to find a way past these setbacks, these inevitable setbacks. A break in routine can happen for so many reasons and something small might affect one person a lot more than another and vice versa. So for the next part, I want to talk about a few things that you can do if you feel that a change in circumstance, and whatever it is, however big or small, is causing you to have a disruption in your fitness or weight loss development. So here are a few tips that may help you get back on track when this kind of thing does happen to you. Okay, the first step. The first step is to identify the problem and make fixing it a priority. And this might sound ridiculous, but if you don't categorically state that X, Y, or Z is your issue for missing training sessions or eating the wrong food at the wrong time, you can't fix it. So, for example, I just spoke about my problem, and that was that I needed to find another gym to train at, and I needed to find a way to get there regularly and consistently, as I had been training before. Another example of a setback might be an issue with diet. So let's say Mr. X might be great at going to the gym consistently and training well, but he might have had a health issue that caused his diet to change or be disrupted. This will have a knock-on effect to training as he may not have the energy to train like he used to and a further knock-on effect from this might be to start becoming less consistent with training and so on and so on until Mr. X doesn't bother with the gym or fitness anymore at all. Now Mr. X's problem and the root cause of slipping up with his fitness goals is identified by a problem with diet that needs to be addressed and this should be a priority. One more example could be that Mrs. Y trained and ate well consistently for several months before going on holiday to Spain and tanning up the nubard on the beach. But when she gets back home, she has less energy than she did before she went away. She's put a bit of weight back on because of all the, you know, paella and sangria and uh, getting back to work in routine is tough enough and at the end of the day the gym is optional so a few weeks trying to get back into normal routine may take priority before getting back to the gym is even considered now mrs y's problem is lack of motivation and energy to get back into the gym right away so she can pick up where she left off and these are just a few examples but There might be times when you have several things going on at once, and this can be a bit trickier, but the principles are the same. Okay, the second step is to plan your recovery. Now, I'm going to call it a recovery because it kind of is. Sometimes the problem might be a physical injury that needs rehabilitating properly, and in my book, recovering and rehabbing an injury muscle, an injured muscle, or coming back from having a limb in a cast can be the same type of thing as coming back from an issue that's mental rather than physical. For instance, if you're lacking in motivation for whatever reason and this is causing you to miss gym sessions, eat wrong things and generally feel down, you'll need to start from the beginning again. Just as a physiotherapist would give you an exercise plan to follow some basic movements of an injured ankle, foot or leg before actually walking again, you need to do the same if the issue is in your head. So after identifying the problem that you're not motivated, for instance, you might want to start from the beginning again. What got you motivated in the first place, the first time around? What made you want to step into the gym or get into your fitness routine in the beginning can you plan to implement this process again and do what you did before do you need a new process or some new motivation now if it is the latter you should set out to plan how you'll do this now if you need any pointers here i know of a great book it's called what is it called fitness and exercise motivation by a dude called james atkinson available in ebook, paperback, and audio format. <laughs> okay, now, um, 
it, it might be an eye opener for you, but if you've if you've not read or listened to it already, but in all seriousness, if you have planned to be mentally strong or plan to build mental robustness alongside your physical training, you should really look into this. I mean, it can be pretty life changing, and a lot of people don't see the importance of of planning your and building your mental robustness and nurturing that motivation because the motivation is your driving force it's your fuel so if you've identified a physical problem that has caused setbacks in your fitness goals you should work on addressing this now let's imagine that you've broken a bone in your leg and you're in a cast for six weeks after much mulling over and troubleshooting you finally identify a problem or setback as being a hulking great plaster on your leg that stops you from doing more than training and in some cases working (laughs) okay yet this is a pretty extreme case again and of course the physical problem could be something much less obvious but let's stick with the broken leg for now so on the face of it you can't do anything for six weeks so you have to just chill out and forget everything until the cast is off. Where's the pizza menu, right? Wrong. You could do this, but it would be causing you more setbacks. During the six weeks while your plaster's on, you could research your diet and set to implement it. You could research recovery for your injury and start to plan it out uh, for the day the cast is taken off. You could even develop a training routine that you can do sitting down to keep your your working parts ticking over. And this way, when you are ready to go, your recovery time will be less, your diet will still be good, you will have minimized further setbacks, and probably most importantly, you will still be motivated. Okay, the third step. Tweak things, fit them into your lifestyle. Now, once you know what's tripping you up and you have a plan to fix it you need to put the plan into action yeah another obvious one but there are things that you can do to make this easier and flow better the easier something is the less stress it will be to do so when you implement your plan you should look at fitting it into your life an example of this if you are struggling to get into a routine with a new workout schedule for instance is that you should fit it in when it's convenient. So going back to the story that I opened with about my recent setback after I figured out that I needed a new gym to train in, I then decided that I was going to use Mrs. Jim's Health and Muscles car when she didn't need it. So to make my plan of working out on a regular basis a bit easier, I fit in my workouts to suit my lifestyle. So I'd now train in the morning and go straight to the gym after my other secret early morning job. This means that I'd have to change my diet a bit and be a bit more organised. But this way I'd be home after my gym sessions for 10am in in the end. So this actually works out a lot better for me because I've got the rest of my day to mess around on the internet and try and sell fitness books and fitness advice so you know the the change in lifestyle i'm actually enjoying that now and i'm actually finding it more convenient than it was before so the fourth step don't give up and persevere so giving up and getting off track again are similar and i want to address a common mistake that's made all the time in the world of health and fitness and fat loss And that's losing sight of your goal by changing your plan, chopping and changing. While this is not a flat out, oh, I give up, I'm not going to the gym today. I guess I'm not made for fitness results after all. Now, it's still a form of giving up on on your plan. For example, so many people will see an advert on social media or, or anywhere else that's promoting the best way to lose weight or the secret to building massive muscles or... Or one of my favourites, the one simple trick to lose weight fast. And uh, seeing these things, you know, they people will be sucked in by it, opting to try something new and exciting, or you know, they want the breakthrough, 
new advice rather than their current plan, whatever that might be. So chopping and changing exercise plans, diets or workout methods too often can be as good as giving up completely when it comes to actually getting visible fitness results because every time you start something new, you're starting something from the beginning and it takes time for your body and your mental health to adapt to the change. Now, I could go on about this all day because it's something I feel quite passionately about and I I always want the best for people when they start training, especially if they're they're new to fitness. But the aim of these podcasts is to try and keep them to under 20 minutes. So, uh, but hopefully you get the picture. Don't chop and change. Don't give up. So don't give up and the new habit or routine will start to fall into place. Even though the new way of doing things might be really uncomfortable at first, with a bit of perseverance and work, the new way of doing things will become the normal. It's all part of the fitness and weight loss journey and I'd say that if you do want to tweak things or even make big changes to the way you do things, you should only start to make these changes after a minimum of of four week intervals. Give it a chance to start working. Give your idea and your first plan a chance to start working. Before I wrap it up, I just want to make it clear that the road to fitness and weight loss is never a straight one and it never runs as smoothly as you plan it, however much planning you put in. Most people find before and after pics of very successful weight loss stories inspirational and in many cases this is what actually gets someone to the point when they're standing at the start line. But as someone who knows what it takes to earn real jaw-dropping fitness results like this, I'm inspired actually knowing what these guys went through rather than just looking at the photos. Because I know what they've been through. I know they, they've, it's not been easy for them. Because it never is. But they've made it. Now, you can bet a pound to a penny that their weight loss journey was not easily summed up by comparing two pictures. They will have had many ups and downs, setbacks and changes in circumstance that affected their mindset and motivation. But in the end, they overcame, and this is what I hope for everyone who sets out on a fitness journey. I hope that when a setback of any kind does arise, they have the knowledge and determination to face it down and get past it. And I especially hope this for you as you're actually here listening to me ramble on. And I'm I'm obviously always really grateful for that. Anyway, thanks for being here and I hope that it's been useful. As always, buy all my fitness books and audiobooks, leave Amazon reviews. These things are very valuable to me as I'm self-published. But again, I want to say thanks for being here. I'm really grateful that you're listening and I hope you've found this useful. And I wish you all the best with your fitness journey. Okay, take it easy, but not too easy. Jim.